In this chapter, you will learn about the roles that haptics can play in a multisensory application, three approaches for creating haptic content, and the process and resources for designing haptic interactions. In the previous chapters, you learned that haptics research and development rely on human sensory perception as well as building or selecting technology that can render perceptually salient touch sensations. In this chapter, we focus on user applications and the process and resources for creating haptic content. Haptic interaction design is still a young field of research that is growing in popularity in the haptics and human-computer interaction communities. A wide range of user applications can benefit from the addition of touch feedback. McLean and colleagues described the roles that haptics can play in a multisensory application according to three parameters. A haptic signal can be complementary or reinforcing, it can be primary or secondary, and it can be synchronous or sequenced in relation to other modalities. For number one, a haptic signal can work with other senses to provide reinforcing information about the same percept, or complementary information about a separate one. In this example, haptic sensations applied to the amputee's arm reinforce interaction by duplicating visual information about grasping of the object. In this video game, the force and vibration conveys impact information from the gunshots that complements the visual scenery. For number two, haptic sensations may be the primary information source, without which the user may be lost or the task may be very challenging. In contrast, as a secondary modality, haptics may improve execution of a task that mainly relies on visual or auditory information. In previous examples, the user relies on all senses to perform the interactions and tactile information does not stand alone. In contrast, with this shape-changing haptic device, the user can navigate by feeling the device without needing to look at the device configuration. Here, haptics is the primary modality of communication while visual information may or may not be available. And finally, the timing of haptic sensations may be synchronous or sequenced with respect to other modalities. In many cases, haptic sensations are synchronized with the visual and auditory events. In contrast, with this shape-changing navigation device, the user may receive the haptic sensations initially while paying attention to their surroundings and subsequently can check the visual configuration of the device for more details. When integrating haptics into an application, hapticians often rely on the results of human touch perception studies. Here is an example where haptic feedback is added to a surgical robot so that surgeons can remotely feel tissue contact and vibrations in a palpation task. To design the remote feedback for their application, researchers needed to build on basic questions about human touch perception, such as how do humans perceive compliance, pressure, and vibration, and what are the best methods to render haptic properties. The resulting application used skin deformation to render the tissue compliance. In addition, they rendered the feel of the surgical tool moving on the surface through vibrations. To create and render haptic sensations, there are at least three approaches that hapticians commonly use. The model-based approach has the longest history and has been used for decades. In this approach, hapticians use physical and mathematical models of real-world interactions with objects to simulate the haptic sensations. For example, the mathematical model of a spring is widely used in haptics. The formula here shows a force of a spring, F in the formula, that is proportional to X, the change in its displacement. A stiffer spring with a large K, or stiffness measurement, provides a larger force for the same displacement compared to a less stiff spring. Springs are especially valuable to render contact with walls and solid objects in a virtual environment. Pressing on a virtual wall is similar to pressing against a spring with an infinite stiffness. Interacting with a soft object is in turn similar to pushing on a spring with low stiffness. Data-driven haptic rendering is a more recent approach that is growing in the haptics community. Here, researchers capture data from real-world interactions with objects and use that to render similar sensations in the virtual world. This approach is also known as haptic camera or haptography. A great example of data-driven rendering is the work of Culbertson and Kuchenbecker on simulating real-world textures on a tablet. In this example, a haptic pen was used to record data from real-world surfaces. The pen had a magnetic tracking sensor for capturing position and velocity of user motion, a three-axis accelerometer for recording vibrations from interacting with the surface, and a force sensor at the tip of the pen to record the amount of force that the user applied while dragging the tool over the surface. 
With this pen, they recorded data from free-form interactions with over 100 surfaces and created statistical models of the interactions. To render virtual textures, the authors designed a similar pen that had a vibration actuator and could produce the texture vibrations based on their statistical models. The vibrotactile rendering was dynamically adapted to the user's speed and force. The resulting virtual textures were rated highly realistic by users. These texture models together with models of object friction and hardness can also be added to a phantom device to render realistic interactions with virtual objects. In the third approach, haptic effects are designed and hand-tuned ahead of time before being rendered to the users when an event occurs. This approach is commonly used in game design, where effects such as gunshots or explosions are included in the game assets and then are replayed when a certain event happens in the game. For example, a library based on vibrotactile technology was created by Immersion Incorporated for Android applications and games. Hapticians often design haptic content as an iterative process that also includes other sensory modalities and goals of the applications. This practice is known as haptic experience design, or hacks d as defined by Schneider and McLean. Haptic interaction design is a subfield of interaction design and starts in a similar manner by sketching many ideas and subsequently refining a few of them to be polished into products. Designers browse existing resources for inspiration and ideas, and they share their designs with colleagues or end users for feedback. A growing set of public resources are emerging to support these design activities with haptic hardware. Let's go through each of these design activities in more detail. Browsing existing resources is an important step for ideation. Online collections are great resources for inspiration in visual design. Browsing haptic content online is challenging since one experiences haptic sensations through specific hardware. Nonetheless, public haptic resources are emerging. Haptopedia is a public collection that focuses on GFF hardware. Chai 3D is an open source software framework and API for creating GFF applications. It also provides a set of example applications that showcase the range of possibilities with the framework. Pen Haptic Texture Toolkit and ViveViz focus on vibrotactile technology. The Pen Haptic Texture Toolkit is a collection of 100 textures that can be rendered through a voice coil vibration actuator. ViveViz is a collection of 120 vibration patterns with rich sensation, emotion, and metaphor descriptions from users. Sketching many ideas is an integral component of design. Sketching visual content is often done with pen and paper. There are also several software tools for designing graphics and visual interactions. In contrast, sketching haptics often requires knowledge of hardware and programming it, so this can be slow. In recent years, hapticians have been experimenting with how to make rapid sketching possible. Simple Haptics by Camille Mousset advocates rapid prototyping of haptic hardware and interactions with everyday objects, scrap materials, and simple electronics. The author presents several prototypes that exhibit different haptic qualities. For example, the spinner prototype explores the idea of creating an object that can change its center of mass in a circular pattern which makes it feel like a virtual arrow. The creation of each prototype is documented on the Simple Haptics website with images and videos. More examples of rapid sketching are also available on the course website. Another interesting example is the HapKit device. HapKit is a low-cost, one-degree-of-freedom DIY haptic device. It can be built and programmed by students and novice designers to create a range of virtual environments. The components and steps for building a HapKit programming, or customizing it is publicly available. Building a HapKit and programming virtual environments is a great way to get started in haptics. There are also software tools that enable the rapid sketching of haptic sensations. With Haptic Touch Toolkit, users can modify the softness, breakiness, and oscillation of a sensorized puck for tabletop applications. As another example, Voodle enables users to create expressive robot motion with their voice. Fine-tuning the initial sketches into haptic interactions that feel nice and match the other modalities often take many iterations and require careful design choices. 
Here, haptitians carefully consider all of the timing of modalities, remove any artifacts of the haptic sensations, and use perceptual illusions to further enhance the multisensory experience. Sharing the outcomes with other designers and users is crucial for good design. User testing and evaluation is especially important in haptics since lay users tend to think differently about haptic experiences. In contrast to the experts who tend to think about parameters of the technology, lay users often rely on sensory and emotional attributes or use metaphors and example applications to describe and make sense of the haptic content. Novice designers often leave it to the end to get feedback on their design, whereas experts solicit feedback throughout their entire process, starting as early as their initial sketches. In the initial stages, informal interviews and pilot studies enables designers to evaluate their ideas and collect rich comments of the pros and cons of each design from users. As the prototypes evolve into published applications, designers may opt for controlled quantitative user experiments to validate their design. In recent years, guidelines on how to evaluate the usability of haptic experiences, as well as their sensory and emotional aspects, are starting to emerge. These guidelines can establish standard practices and make the field more accessible for novice hapticians. Haptic designers often iterate through these four essential components of browsing, sketching, refining, and sharing their process to create new experiences for training, rehabilitation, entertainment, education, and many other applications. In this chapter, you learned about the roles that haptics can play in a multisensory application, model-based, data-driven, and pre-designed approaches for creating haptic content, and four components of the HacksD process and existing community resources that support them. In the assignment, you will explain the role of haptics in a set of example applications, discuss the approaches that could be used for creating haptic content in each case, and ideate an interaction that can benefit from haptic feedback. Check out the course website for more details about the assignments.